Hello, and this is an ad. But stick around for 30 seconds, give or take, because on no disclosure, I'd never lead you away from the fanciness you deserve. That's right. This podcast is sponsored by Anchor. What is Anchor? It's the easiest way on this planet, maybe even the galaxy, to make a podcast. I use this system myself. It's free, and there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer with just a click of a couple buttons. And on top of that, they'll distribute your podcast for you. So your podcast can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and a ton of others. Your sexy, sultry voice will be heard all over the interwebs easily. And we all want that, don't we? What's more fancy than your voice? Money! With Anchor, your podcast can be monetized with no minimum listenership. Who does that? These guys do. Just download the free Anchor app or visit anchor.fm to get started. Again, just download the free Anchor app or visit anchor.fm to get started. Let your voice be heard. No more shouting from mountaintops with your loincloth and your bullhorn. No more calling people up, begging them to listen to your podcast, and then spending the rest of the night crying into your favorite pillow. Let Anchor do the work for you. All you need to do is create. Like I said, I use the service myself, and if you know me, you know that I would never make an ad if I didn't believe in what I was talking about. Now, ad over. Let's get on to the episode. You animal, you. What episode of No Disclosure is this? I can't remember. What is it, Cassie? 14? Are you sure? Let's look it up. Yeah, I didn't do an episode of No Disclosure yesterday. Sorry, guys. But uh, the voice just wasn't wasn't there. Uh, You know, I, I guess I'm still getting over being sick. So if, you know, you guys might hear a couple, like, obvious cuts... On this episode of No Disclosure, I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to do this in stages. I'm going to have to. Because after a few minutes, I'm doing it already. <laughs> my voice went, boo Because after just a few minutes, my voice goes out. I mean, it just goes out. So I apologize for any, like, obvious cutting. But, uh, yeah, I'm talking with a, uh, with a cough drop in my mouth right now. But after a while, my voice just gives out. So I'm going to have to do this episode in stages. But you're okay with that, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I know you are. Welcome to No Disclosure. How have you guys been doing? <coughs> I've been doing awesome, as you can tell. Hacking my brazanes out. But uh, I do have something very, very important and special to tell all of you. Uh, no Disclosure has moved up in the world. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We have a pop filter! <laughs> Right, we have a pop filter. I know it makes it. Oh, it's so much fancier. If you don't know what a pop filter is, like, have you ever seen footage of somebody in a recording studio, or you know, somebody doing a podcast, whatever? They have that screen in front of their mouth. That is to stop what we call plosives. Um, if you listen to any episode of No Disclosure before this one, or uh, any shoddily produced, especially rap album. Um, you're going to hear B's and P's cutting out the microphone because this thin mesh or sometimes metal material um, stops those rushes of air from hitting the microphone. Um, Pop filters normally aren't very expensive. Uh, You could make one fairly cheap. But um, this isn't the only kind of recording that I do. I needed a you know pretty professional level pop filter. I'm not gonna tell you how much I spent on it, but uh, you know no disclosure moving no disclosure moving up in the world. Let me show you the difference. Okay, this is without a pop filter. I mean, oh wait, tell you what, it'll be easier if I just move the pop filter out of the way. Watch, I'll show you the difference. Okay, this is major. Now I'm not going to. Um, over-enunciate the things that I say. You can hear some of the plosives already. Uh, the B's and the P's. Um, the penis made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Penis, penis, penis. Did you hear that? The plosives? When I was doing an episode of No Disclosure before, I would have to turn the gain up on the microphone like really high and kind of back off. And you still heard them. 
So uh, let's put the uh, let's. <laughs> it's, it's so weird. Let's put the pop filter back on. Whoop. The penis made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Penis, 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 penis. See, sounds awesome, doesn't it? Thank goodness for the pop filter. Oh, yeah, we finally got one. So now I can keep the gain down. I can mix it properly, which is going to make the podcast and no disclosure sound better. Normally, to somebody you know who knows what they're doing, it's going to make it sound better. Um, depending on who you ask, I'm either the best or the worst mixer on the planet. So uh, we're going to get through our our first segment here. As Cassie's getting dressed, we're getting ready to go to uh, to see her to see her pappy, to see her dad. Uh, oh, she, sorry, <laughs> she really doesn't call her dad pappy. That's that'd be really weird. I don't know if that'd be a deal breaker or not, but uh, anyway, there's that country shit. I just, I, I don't get it, but <laughs> no, she doesn't call him Pappy. We're going to her dad's. Okay. We're just going to go visit dad, grandpa. You know what I mean? So she's getting ready. My voice is starting to kind of give out a little bit anyway, so it'd be a good time for a cut. <coughs> well, I could still do that. So that's good. Has anybody seen the trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog? <laughs> wow who hasn't seen the trailer for that go on youtube and overlook the fact that the like to dislike ratio is a thing of legend but they turned sonic into this weird furry culture kind of anthropomorphic thing with human teeth and no penis it is, it's just, it's, oh, it's really bizarre. Like, really shitty CGI. His eyes look weird. He has human teeth. His it, 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 legs are too long. I mean, it's really bizarre how they designed Sonic. It, it's, uh, it's, it's really fucking weird. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the thing that gets me the most about this Despite how weird and cringy the entire trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog was, the Hedgehog was, when the hell is Sega gonna realize that Sonic the Hedgehog is financial poison? When I was a kid, I wanted a Super Nintendo. My brother wanted a Genesis. I know my brother ain't too bright, but I wanted a Super Nintendo. He wanted a fucking Genesis. For some reason, as a kid, I thought to myself, "Whoa." Better graphics, obviously. Better games, better music. I didn't listen to the crap on TV. I looked at the results. I mean, the the Super Nintendo, as far as graphics, sound, all that, games completely outclassed the Genesis. <coughs> completely outclassed it. I know the guys at Sega were supposed to be the cool kids on the block, but they were peddling an inferior product. I knew that as a kid. Saw right through it. Sonic the Hedgehog, my brother was all about it. He was this cool character that wasn't so kiddie like He was a bit of a smart ass. He was, you know, he was tough. He was a wise guy. He was cool. I saw through it, man. Even as a child, I saw right through Sonic the Hedgehog. I knew that it was a uh, half-assed attempt to compete with Mario. And I remember even telling my brother, I'm talking like 9, 10 years old. I remember telling my brother that Sonic has no substance to him. And as the years progress and they have to build more and more on Sonic and make more games and stuff, you're going to see how shallow that character is because the games are really going to start sucking because the foundation ain't there. Something to that effect. I remember telling him that. Lo and behold, Sonic the Hedgehog becomes, you know, uh, video game poison. Every game that's ever been released since the originals have just been trash, utter crap. Which really makes me question the mind power of the people at Paramount Pictures. Anybody who knows the history of video games knows that Sega has made the dumbest decisions in the entire industry. Every company has had their share of stupid decisions. Nintendo's made theirs. Atari's made theirs. But uh, Sega really takes the taco. 
I mean, the only thing that they've ever made worth anything within the past 20 years is Alien Isolation. I was amazed that Sega made that game. God, it was a masterpiece. I saw Sega on the box, and I even second-guessed myself buying the damn thing. Then I started reading reviews on it, the thing that people were crazy. Or that Sega got together the last, you know, seven, eight dollars in their bank account and bribed somebody to give it a good review. I was really thinking this. And anybody who knows anything about video games will think the same thing. Dreamcast? Totally. Way ahead of its time. One of the best consoles ever made. But it was made by Sega. So, shitty planning, shitty foresight, fell apart completely on its face. Sega's just like that. They have the Midas touch with video games. Everything they touch turns to absolute donkey diarrhea. <coughs> Excuse the coughing. My voice is starting to go. Uh, but I, I need to get through this real quick. I always knew, even as a kid, it was a half-assed attempt to, to, to keep up with Mario. But they're making a Sonic the Hedgehog film, right? That means he's still marketable to somebody. The question I have is who the hell keeps buying this Sonic the Hedgehog shit? Who? Who keeps buying the video games? Who is downloading the mobile stuff? Who is this marketable for? Obviously, it's marketable to somebody. I mean, I wouldn't put it past Sega to say... Let's make a movie about something that we can't sell because we're dumb as shit. I see Sega doing that. I don't see Paramount buying into that. The guys at Sega really aren't that persuasive and intelligent. So obviously, Sonic the Hedgehog is marketable to somebody. Who? (laughs) Who keeps buying the Sonic the Hedgehog stuff? This just shows how inherently clueless Sega still is. And Paramount for even listening to them. The second a representative from Sega came into the office pitching a film, they should have been th- <laughs> they should have been thrown out. Case in point, this terrifying creature that they attempted to put on film, and then Jeff Fowler. This is just a couple days ago. Jeff Fowler, the film's director, said Sonic would get a redesign based on the tremendous backlash from not only fans. But people who have a sense of what is creepy and terrifying. The damage may already be done because the trailer has an overwhelmingly amount of dislikes to like ratio. The only thing that I did like about it... (coughs) The only thing that I did like about it was the casting of Dr. Robotnik. Everybody has been saying unanimously, and I agree with them, Jim Carrey is going to do a fantastic job. I loved in the trailer how Robotnik... (laughs) How Robotnik starts off as just this normal guy working with the military. They don't quite want to go with him because he's a little batty, you know. Uses his technology to kind of get Sonic. And then as the trailer progresses, especially the last part, you see him really morph into the Robotnik that we know. Jim Carrey, he's over the top. His overacting is going to be perfect with it. I have no issue with Jim Carrey. What I saw on the trailer, it looks like we got old Jim Carrey back, right? I was happy with that. We got the zany... Crazy, wacky, Ace Ventura-ish, Dumb and Dumber Jim Carrey back. We haven't seen that kind of acting from Jim Carrey in a while. I mean, just the absolute unhinged zaniness from Jim Carrey. I, I, I love it. Everybody loves it. The Robotnik casting could not have been better. But what I thought would be a cooler movie would be like, just call it Robotnik. Just have Jim Carrey starting off as this normal kind of wacky mad scientist guy and show his descent into madness. Make Sonic the blue blur that he's supposed to be. And focus on Robotnik. Wouldn't that be an awesome film, Cassie? Just call it Robotnik. Uh, Who says that you have to have a film based on your shallow, one-dimensional cash cow hero? Robotnik's one of the greatest villains in video game history. He was actually thought out and shelled out. I thought that that would have been a way better film is just call it Robotnik, you know, and show his descent into madness. But no, we have this terrifying blue thing that everybody hates. And um, Panasonic is really getting a big, uh, I mean, Paramount. Oh, God, how many times have I said Panasonic instead of Paramount? I really hope I haven't kept saying Panasonic. Paramount Pictures. I got to really go back and listen to this. If I said Panasonic for some reason over Paramount, (laughs) <laughs> multiple times, just substitute Panasonic for Paramount. I don't want to go back and edit it. 
<laughs> what was I getting at? Um, shit. <laughs> I completely lost my train of thought. Uh, wow, it's gone. I mean, it is gone. Oh, Paramount. I hope they've learned their lesson with this, okay? That they've gotten a big dose of what it's like <laughs> to trust Sega with anything. Or to um, allow us... I just we, we've, we've got to let Sonic the Hedgehog die, okay? Can we play taps on this character finally, please? When this movie bombs, and I say when this movie bombs, can we please retire this damn character? Sonic the Hedgehog has never been cool, will never be cool. The only thing he ever appealed to, there were only three good games. He only appealed to little kids back in the 90s. It's just, Sonic has never held up. I even saw through it as a child. It's just, he's never been cool. And uh, I know I'm, people, some people are going to get butt hurt over that. Maybe these are the same idiots that keep Sonic alive, that keep buying shit. I don't know. <coughs> I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna close the segment out. I'm gonna come back to it because my voice is starting to go. But before I do, I would like everybody to think of uh, Mr. Peter Mayhew. Um, Peter Mayhew, uh, who you may or may not know, the man known as the Gentle Giant himself, passed away at 74 on Thursday. Uh, he was the man famous for playing Chewbacca. Uh, yeah, passed away April 30th. It was announced on Thursday, and uh, yeah. Man, really, really sad deal. We all knew Peter Mayhew. We were all big fans of Chewbacca and Star Wars and what he's done. Uh, Godspeed, Mr. Mayhew. That's, uh, that, that's, that, that sucks. He was, uh, every photo I've ever seen of him, he was like, he, he seemed like the happiest person ever. Everybody in the entire casting crew of the Star Wars film said he was just like the greatest guy. And it's, uh, it's sad. So God bless you, Peter Mayhew, your friends and family. All right, so I'm back. Voice has recovered a little bit. I'm sitting here, stomach full of macadamia nuts and uh, grilled chicken and potato chips. I know it's kind of a weird combo, but we went to Cassie's dad's, and uh, he barbecued some chicken, had some chips with it, and uh, went to the store because we had to get groceries and uh, got a little thing of macadamia nuts. So... The combination of that, you know, with the lemonade that I'm currently drinking to keep my voice nice and nice and moist. Hopefully that won't, um, you know, combination-wise give me explosive diarrhea, which is what everything pretty much gives me nowadays. Growing old's awesome. Mm. Ah, yeah, no coffee today. Lemonade. Trying to keep the voice, uh, uh, trying to keep the voice all fancy. So, I was going to ask you guys, um, uh, has anybody seen the uh, new Ted Bundy movie? The one on Netflix? Now, people are kind of polarized about it, but let me let me just give you my opinion, okay? Um, I think it's worth seeing because Zac Efron did a great job. Fantastic job. There were some parts that I'm not kidding. I thought it was footage. And, you know, I had to kind of look twice to make sure. I was like, holy crap, that is Zac Efron. I mean, uh, the movie is worth watching just his performance alone. He was great. James Hetfield is in it, which is pretty awesome, only for about a minute. But, you know, they even played a Metallica song during the the uh, the film, too, which was cool. They, they played a section of the Four Horsemen. But uh, anyway, aside from that, I did not like the Ted Bundy movie. And I'll tell you why. With a movie, you kind of expect certain things to be embellished, certain things. You know, because it, it's a movie. You, you need to expect that. Uh, from this particular guy, from this particular character, the way that Ted Bundy was, what's funny is, I'm just going to give you my quick little review on it, my quick little take on the Ted Bundy movie. I think it is worth seeing because of Zac Efron's performance, which was fantastic. But um, they didn't focus on the murders at all. You know, the stuff that would have been interesting, you know, <laughs> regarding Ted Bundy, they didn't really tackle. A lot of it was about his relationship with his, you know, with Liz, with and you know the the one after that kind of stuck with him during the trial, which was really odd because you know you're dealing with um, a serial killer, you're dealing with somebody who even after he got you know put in the can, just a lot of really interesting things you know surrounding Ted Bundy. They did talk about you know the various escapes from uh, uh, penal institutions and stuff like that, but um, you know uh, it, it was just really weird the stuff that they embellished was it's okay if you embellish things in a film that 
really not a lot of people know and not a lot of people can point out, you know? But the stuff that they embellished in the film that they dramatized was stuff that everybody knows. And there were some scenes in there I was just like, ah, oh, I, was, I was so frustrated. It's like, that's not how it happened, you know? <laughs> and they didn't focus on the murders at all. I think they humanized Ted Bundy too much. They showed times where he was uh, broken down and sad and worried. Ted Bundy, let me tell you something about Ted Bundy. Aside from being a master manipulator, a textbook narcissist, sociopath, psychopath, whatever you want to call it. The Ted Bundy only gave a shit about one person in his entire life, and that's Ted Bundy. And uh, I think they humanized him way too much. The man was not human. He was a monster. Uh, it's just, uh, it was a really weird movie. They only focused on the, uh, you know, uh, the murders, you know, what he actually did for just a few minutes of the last part of the film. It was, it, it was just bizarre. I mean, you had so much to work with with Ted Bundy. I mean, you, you could have had an epic epic movie but um uh, yeah it was just really bizarre i think they humanized uh, ted bundy way too much but i i really do think you should still see it um you know because zach efron's performance alone i mean he really nailed it he did awesome so uh as i inch away from the microphone here to try to grab my my phone <laughs> let's look at the news today let's see what's going on let's go to the actual purpose of no disclosure right but I had to talk about that kind of stuff because, you know, it's current events. It's stuff that we all know about, especially the Sonic the Hedgehog thing. We had to talk about that because that was really cringy and really weird. Uh, let's see what we got here. Really? That's a crap load of clickbait. Seven-year-old boy dies when trying to recreate a Bad Bunny video. What the hell's Bad Bunny? Am I that out of touch? Like, am I that old? What's, what, I don't even know what that is. Let's click on it. Newsweek. Young boy has died from the burns he suffered. Ooh. While trying to reenact the video clip of a popular song from, oh, Puerto Rican singer Bad Bunny. That's why I don't know. According to the Dominican uh, newspaper, Listen Diario. Seven-year-old F F Franklin. Oh, is this? Let's just, we're, we're just going to call him Franklin. B Ooh, is was pronounced dead on uh, Tuesday at the Robert Reed Cabral Children's Hospital in Santo Domingo. Uh, wow. Three kids. Oh, there were three kids. Uh, Marcel Mora and Jelly Mora, respectively 14 and 11, are in serious but relatively stable condition. One of them died. Three kids were reportedly trying to recreate the video of a Bad Bunny song, La Romana, in which the singer and Dominican artist El Alpha sing and dance while surrounded by flames. Oh boy! Well, that that sucks, man. That's that's tragic. Um, is there anything in this article about why these kids were allowed to watch this video? I mean, I don't know about you guys. I don't know how things go in the Dominican Republic, but when my kids sit down to watch YouTube or whatever, uh, when they're allowed to do that, I make damn sure I know what they're watching. I know about the content. I make sure that that content is sound. You don't let kids just sit on the internet and click on whatever the heck they want to, especially these music videos. I don't know about Dominican Republic, but let me tell you something about America, man. Music videos in this country are softcore porn. I mean, it's it's insane, especially shitty pop music. That's that's tragic. That's that is, ugh, man. That's a bummer, dude. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Death toll raised to 41 in Russian passenger plane fire. Oh, wow, that's a heck of a photo. Man, this is by the Associated Press. In Moscow, latest on an airplane that landed in flames at a Moscow airport. Russian officials have given out conflicting numbers on a fiery airline accident in Moscow. Shikapakapokachakapikapakapakachu airport. So I can't pronounce it. Uh, 40 people dead. Wow. That's a uh, man. That that photo is something else. You know what's funny? I I haven't made an episode of No Disclosure since the uh, Notre Dame fire. Uh, I haven't really weighed in on that. Tragic. I mean that 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 cathedral is what almost nine hundred years old, maybe more. I mean that thing is freaking medieval, man. And people are whining about. Well, we should spend money to you know, help the poor, and we should do this, and we should do that, and we should spend money on. 
you know, uh, low rent housing, you know, rather than fixing this, uh, you know, ancient cathedral. Nobody planned for this thing to burn down. Okay, <laughs> this uh, this wasn't something that was expected. This is a piece of not. Yeah, this is a piece of human history that we need to fix. Um, you know, I, I I I have friends in France. I like I said in previous episodes of No Disclosure, I do respect the French. Uh, it's just awesome. You know, just awful, awful what happened to Notre Dame. I think I just said awesome by accident. Oh my god. Jeez, <laughs> oh, I really should start editing episodes of No Disclosure, right? Uh, this is a sad one. I saw this earlier. If I can get to it. Rachel Held Evans, a popular Christian writer, dies at 37. I never read any of her books, but she did have a blog. She's from Dayton, Tennessee, so she's from here. Uh, she wrote three books that, like, talked about faith, doubt, life in the Bible Belt. Um, you know, uh, she had a website going on. I was kind of aware of her, but I've never read any of her material. Uh... Really sucks, man. She, she died really young. On April 19th, uh, her husband posted updates about her health. Apparently, she was having, like, constant, never-ending seizures. Just constant seizures. They put her in a medically-induced coma, and she never got out of it. Uh, yeah, one of my Christian sisters has, has passed away at a, at a young age. Um, man, what a, what a terrible way to go. But still, you know, medically-induced coma... She, uh, you know, she wasn't feeling anything. She wasn't suffering. So, I mean, that's, that's a, oh, she's beautiful. Man, that's terrible. Ah, terrible. What else we got here? Five-year-old missing girl in Houston. Stepfather says she was abducted. I, I really hope he's on the suspect list. I'd say nine times out of ten it was somebody they knew. Uh, let's see. Diana Ross. She, Diana Ross. Wait a minute. Let's go on Twitter. Diana Ross just played the Jazz Festival in New Orleans. She's still alive? Oh, my God. Diana Ross is still around? What is she, like 200? Wow, she looks good. Holy cow. Man, this woman does not age. Whoa, she just played Jazz Festival in New Orleans. Man, I wish I could pull up some video of this. I'll have to watch video later and then let you guys know how it was if you haven't seen the video of it. Diana Ross, what? <laughs> She's still alive. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> oh, man. God. When she was born, the Dead Sea was still the sick. I mean, that's crazy. Oh, man, she looks, uh, she looks darn good to her age, for her age. Man, I'd like to shake the hand of her surgeon. I mean, I'd like to shake the hand of Diana Ross for, you know, lasting this long. That's, that is crazy. What else we got? News? What else? Come on, news. Give me something. Give me something, news. News. <laughs> news. <laughs> I need something news. Uh, news. <laughs> I'm not getting anything. Miley Cyrus is coming back to Tennessee to perform at a Bill Street Music Festival. Is, <laughs> isn't that awesome news? We should talk about that, about Miley Cyrus, <laughs> the Amber Alert. You know, I'm seeing another piece of news about this. Let's click on it. Amber Alert issued for missing five-year-old in Houston. Oh, she's so pretty. Oh, she's a little sweetheart. Amber Alert after a five-year-old girl was reporting missing by a family member. Oh, damn, it's a video. Ah, uh, I kind of lack the capability right now of no disclosure to splice that in. But uh, I wonder if we can get back to the article on it. Uh, let's see. Can we get back to the article on it? Oh, I did see something just a second ago. Um, <coughs> Avengers Endgame has beaten Titanic as far as highest grossing films. Now, as far as like adjusted for inflation, the highest grossing film of all time is, of course, Gone with the Wind. And then I think it was Avatar, Titanic, uh, Episode 7. Um, not adjusted for inflation. I believe Titanic was number two or three. But, uh, yeah, Endgame beat it. Kick Titanic's butt. Take that, James Cameron. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't mean to be mean about that because, you know, James Cameron, you are awesome. Possibly one of the greatest directors who's ever lived. Even though James Cameron is known to be... Um, a big baby 
behind the scenes throwing tantrums and just being a dick to everybody in the crew. James Cameron, from what I hear, is not the most pleasant guy to work for. Heck of a director, though. But it's uh, it's it's kind of nice to see uh, Mr. Ego dethroned a little bit. So I did find the article about the uh, the Amber Alert. Um, Houston police have issued an Amber Alert asking for the public's help in finding a five-year-old girl. Houston Police Department initially said uh, Malia, is that is that how you say it, Malia Davis? Uh, was last seen around 9 p.m. Saturday night and was thought to be with three unknown males in a blue Chevy pickup truck. According to police, uh, Malia's stepfather, stepfather told authorities that he, her, and her two-year-old brother were abducted by three males on Friday night. Darian Vince, the stepfather. Uh, wow. They were on their way to George Bush Intercontinental Airport Friday night. To pick up Malia's mother, who's flying in from Massachusetts. Wow. So, uh, man, I really hope that uh, I really little hope that, that that I hope that little sweetheart comes back safe. Um, man, that's that's uh, God, that's that's terrible. Let me have another drink of lemonade here, real quick. My voice is starting to go again. If you can't hear it. Ah, oh, man. What are we at? Uh, what are we at? Like 30 minutes? Something like that? What are we at? 30 minutes? <laughs> I haven't seen Avengers Endgame yet. I know we keep talking about movies. But I've got to go see the Bladder Buster. <laughs> i got to go see it. Avengers, you know, all the Avengers movies have been awesome. I'm sure Endgame is no exception. Uh, one thing that I did see, or rather I should say that I haven't seen online is people have been really cool about spoilers for this one. I don't know if it's the video that Josh Brolin posted <laughs> on Twitter, you know, basically telling everybody, hey, don't be a dick, be cool. Let's stay away from spoilers. A lot of people worked really hard to make this movie. Uh, maybe that was it, you know. Josh Brolin tells you to do something. You do it. You know, Josh Brolin could come over to my house and be like, Billy, do the laundry. I'll be like, yes, sir. You know, Josh Brolin tells you to do something, including not putting spoilers for the new movie. You're going to listen to Josh Brolin. I mean, who wants Josh Brolin coming to their house to kick their ass? Not me. <coughs> Josh Brolin could send me an email right now. I'd be like, go outside and stand there for an hour. I'd be like, you got it. You know, because I don't want Josh Brolin coming over here and going all men in black on all my ass. No, not that, that ain't going to happen. I saw the remake of Amityville. You know, when he did his, when he did James Brolin's role, his father, you know, when he played the, the lead in the Amityville. I saw that. He had the same madness that his dad had in him. I saw the Goonies when he's doing the thing with the workout deal with the, you know, the, the arm thing. You don't want to mess with somebody that does that. He probably still does it. I mean, have you seen the guy? He's huge. Like since the Goonies, he's probably still doing that, that arm thing exercise deal that he was doing. I don't want to mess with Josh Brolin. <laughs> uh, Adele teases a possible new album on her 31st birthday great uh, you know what I'm not going to give her any crap I like Adele I heard that she was having some major vocal issues lately like her voice was like really really starting to to go I hope not um, I think Adele is awesome I've always said that there is only one white person uh, possibly two who could really sing the blues and do it correctly in my mind. That's uh, James Taylor and Eric Clapton. Um, uh, but Adele, you have really proved me wrong. I mean, she, uh, God, that woman's voice is thunder, man. I mean, she's got some real soul to her. Uh, I love Adele. She's awesome. Really, really good singer. Okay, so I saw this. Uh, I'm going to do one more because this is interesting. I saw this. Uh, at Walmart when I was walking by and you see the, the freaking stupid tabloid magazines and all that. But I kept seeing something about, you know, that actress from Full House. What's her name? I keep seeing stuff about her. Let's find out what's going on. I don't know what the deal is. Something about her kid. Full House actress in trouble. I don't even know what to tell Google. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like five years old. Lori Laughlin. That's her name. So let's look that up. 
Lori Laughlin, trouble. I can't think of a better word than trouble. Uh, oh, you know what we should do, actually? Let's just look up Lori Laughlin. Look up her little bio here, see if we can find it. Lori Laughlin. Why am I shouting at my phone? Shit, it typed that down too. Gosh darn it. No! <laughs> I typed down everything I just said. Lori Laughlin. Now on my Google search history, there is a search for Lori Look, and there's a search for Lori Laughlin. Shit, why am I yelling at my phone? Okay. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, skibbity bop bow, skibbity bay. <coughs> here it is. Laughlin and her husband were among. Remember, she played uh, Uncle Jesse's love interest. You know, they had the twins on the show. Beautiful woman, great actress. Laughlin and her husband were among fifty individuals charged by the FBI. See, I don't know this. I'm just reading this right now. Laughlin and her husband were among fifty individuals charged by the FBI and U.S. Attorney's Office. On March 12, 2019, in a large-scale nationwide college entrance exam cheating scandal. What? The indictment against the couple alleged that they had paid $500,000 disguised as a donation to the Key Worldwide Foundation in order that the uh, USC University of Southern California's admissions committee would be led to believe that their two daughters would be joining the school's women's rowing team if admitted. When, in fact, neither young woman had ever trained in the sport and had no plans to do so. <laughs> so, apparently, she's not the only uh, rich person that's that's done this recently. Apparently, they have quite a few names. That she's buying her kid's way into college. That's great. And you know that since this got exposed, I mean, this has probably been a thing for quite some time. Awesome. That's really good. Education system in America. Well, we're... <laughs> you want to, can't go to college? Can't get a scholarship? Didn't get good enough grades? So just buy yourself in. That's probably what half the freaking politicians in this country did. So anyway, guys. <laughs> that's... that's Wow, that's really messed up. She, uh, you know... <laughs> the famous actress makes way more money than I'll probably ever see in my life. Uh, yeah, let's just screw it up and do some stupid illegal crap. What the heck is wrong with people? Anyway, guys, I'll catch you later. Um, we're going to end this episode of No Disclosure because my voice is about ready to go. This episode of No Disclosure, yes, we are sponsored today. <laughs> so sit through my little ad here because you know I'm going to make it fancy. I'm going to make it entertaining, right? We're going to make it fun to listen to. This episode of No Disclosure is brought to you by Patriot Guitars and Patriot Amplification. This is a brand new startup company. Uh, guitar manufacturer, guitar amp manufacturer called Patriot. This is a company to look out for. This is run by the great Matt Van Dyne, and this company is still in the R&D phases right now, still um, designing guitars, has a couple major models coming out right now, uh, as well as the uh, amplification. But um, knowing Mr. Van Dyne personally, this is a guy you really need to look out for. Um, when I'm saying, and I tell people all the time, this is going to be the next Gibson Les Paul, and I'm not kidding. Um, real American handmade guitars built by somebody who actually plays and knows what they're doing. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, man. Wow, my voice is really starting to go. This is how we do ads on No Disclosure. <laughs> When we're sponsored, we break it up with uh, hacking my brain out. But anyway, Patriot, <laughs> Patriot Guitars, Patriot Amplification. Follow them on Facebook. This is a company you definitely want to watch out for. You want a real American-made high-end guitar with high-end components built by an actual pro here in the United States. I know I give Gibson Les Paul a lot of crap, but what's going on lately, would you rather buy... A fall from grace guitar with an awesome name? Or would you rather stick with a real deal American-made freaking guitar? These are going to be awesome. Mark my words. Like I said, still in the R&D phase. Go on Facebook. Check out Patriot Amplification. Check out Patriot Guitars. 
if you're into guitars, if you play guitar, these are going to be the best guitars you've seen in a really long time. I guarantee it. Not just knowing the guy personally. I just know how he is, man. <laughs> this is a guy that when he gets into anything, he's going to be the best at it. And plus, you want guitars made by somebody that really knows what they're doing, that really has a passion for it. And uh, yeah, this episode of No Disclosure is sponsored by Patriot Guitars. Um, but you guys know me, and you know how I am. I would never speak for a company unless this was something that I believed in, unless this is something that I thought uh, was the real deal. I'm not going to be contacted by whatever company or whatever place or whatever for a sponsorship. And if it's not something I would actually use, not something that I think would be worthwhile, I'm not going to throw a turd your way and just be like, oh, this is the greatest thing because they help with no disclosure. No, not going to happen. I do this I do this podcast without sponsorship. And I've started this podcast without sponsorship, and I'll probably continue to do it without any major sponsorship. Um, so, you know, when you get me on no disclosure, this is a real me here, people. No uh, no hiding behind anything except a fancy pop filter. So, <laughs> <coughs> yep, voice is just about gone. So maybe on the next episode of No Disclosure, I'll be feeling a lot better. Thank you for letting me cut halfway through this freaking thing. And uh, I'll catch you guys later. I will have one next week because I guarantee I'll be feeling fine by then. Be fancy. I love you all very, very much. And, uh... Let's be excellent to to each other and party on, dudes. <laughs> Did you know it's the face of fear? No disclosure, fitness, fitness, confiscate.